Our friend Bucky has a background about the medical field because he took a veterinary first aid session, a new couple of names of diseases and drugs, and knows how to give an injection. Everything is okay until Sid shows up. He was Bucky's neighbor and wanted to learn how to give an injection. So after 3000 times of repeating the tutorial, came the moment of truth. Mint filled the needle and was about to inject their poor neighbor. Bucky noticed some bubbles inside the syringe and immediately pushed Mint's hand and the syringe fell to the ground in a dramatic moment. Their neighbor looked at them surprisingly and did not understand what just happened. But Bucky managed to rectify the situation and gave the man the shot and took Mint and dashed off. Mint said to Bucky, why did you take the syringe off my hands? Bucky replied, you are going to kill the guy, you are about to give him an injection of A. Welcome, this is Brain Space, and in this episode we will explain whether A bubbles in syringes could kill you or not. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to get our latest videos first. First, why do doctors use injections while they can simply use medicine orally or topically through ornaments and creams? Why do some conditions like diabetes take insulin shots? Are doctors so evil that they simply would like to hear your, your scream? According to the history of how it was invented, injections were invented by Romans made of a metal cylinder with a piston made of linen and intended to fluid suction from the nose. After that appeared the Muslim Dr. Amar Ben Ali El Musli, who designed the first hollow glass syringe without a pointy tip. Its goal was to suck white water from the cataract eye. In the evolution of the injections, in terms of a form and method of use until 1955, the first plastic syringe similar to what we know nowadays. In fact, the tendency for doctors to use injections is not evil, but a need. Due to two reasons, the first is that some drugs decompose in the acid medium or digested by digestive enzymes in the GIT. The second reason is that in the topical method when applying ornaments or creams, there is a loss of the active substance to some extent until it reaches the desired organ. When the required treatment is needed in severe cases, a more efficient way is needed in these cases. By injecting the drug directly into the blood, it gives an immediate action. So why is there different types of injections, such as subcutaneous, intravenous, and intramuscular? Insulin, for example, is preferably to stay as long as possible with low absorption for the effect to last longer. So it's taken as SC, which is substantious. And the advantages of this method is that it reduces the likelihood of blood clotting compared to IV injection. As for IM injection, it is used in cases where you need to deliver the drug to the blood, not too fast nor too slow. After we know about the different types of injections, let's get to the main point. Is it harmful if you took a syringe with an air bubble? Even though our bodies get a lot of oxygen all the time, here the scenario is a little bit different. Let's agree that oxygen and carbon dioxide are dissolved in the blood and not in their natural form because that's the form in which cells can utilize them. And if it got into the blood in its natural form, it can lead to disasters within the body. Does this mean that if you take an injection with air bubbles you can die? Truth is, what we can say is that it depends on some factors. A. The amount of air that enters the body and the place of injection. B. The type of injection and the time period that the air entered through. And C. Did it enter slow or fast? First, let's start with the IV injection. All veins in the body pours into two main veins. One on the right half of the heart and then to the pulmonary artery and from it to the lungs. In this case, if A entered through injection, it will go through the aforementioned pathway and lungs can get rid of it easily without any problems. But under two conditions, the first condition is that the amount of air is small and that the limit is determined as 0.3 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Meaning if someone weighs 70 kilograms, the limit for them is 20 milliliters. But if the amount is more than that, it's possible to cause death. The second condition is that the heart must be healthy and does not contain any subtle defects which is a hole between the right and the left side of the heart. Because if it exists, the air bubble will travel from the right half of the heart to the left half of the heart. The left and then through the arteries that feed the organs. And having air in any place inside the body except the lungs can be a major disaster, even if this amount is below the limit that we just spoke about. For example, if it reached the coronary artery, it could cause a heart attack. Or if it gets in the carotid arteries, it can cause a brain stroke. In the IM injection, Often, the air comes out through the hole the needle made, or flow through the veins and into the right half of the heart and into the lungs as we mentioned before. But if it's beyond the limit, it can cause the death of the muscle, in which the injection is given and the fat tissue located around it. 
In SC injection, large amount of air can cause blood circulation to become blocked from the side of the skin. So air bubbles in surgeries is dangerous under some conditions. And doctors recommend to be very careful when dealing with syringes and it's advisable that the person who gives it must be experienced and in a hospital to correct the situation if something goes wrong. The injection isn't the only port of air bubbles to enter the body. IV solutions is considered one of the means of delivering air bubbles inside the human body. And that's why it's always supplied with a filter to purify the bubbles. In addition, surgical procedures, especially those related to the nose and the lungs, car accidents that lead to damage to the chest area or the respiratory system in general, all contribute to the possibility of entry bubbles into bloodstream. Also, when someone dives for a long period of time underwater and decides to climb to the surface quickly while holding his breath, the lungs expand due to the decrease in pressure. If you suspect that someone has a preliminary embolism by observing some symptoms such as breathlessness, appears suddenly and increases rapidly, with a severe pain in the chest like angina and increases whenever the person tries to breathe deeply with cough and blood sputum, the best action to take is to lie the person on his left side to lock the air in the right ventricle until medics arrive. And if a question crossed your mind about the strange thing or weird phenomena, write it in the comments below. And if you like the video, hit the like button. And if it's your first time watching us, hit the like and the subscribe button to get our latest videos first. Peace.